What is shear really in fluid mechanics? Well, we can start at the beginning. Uh, the first notion of shear you have when you ride a bike. And if you ride the bike a little fast, then you will lean into the turn. As you lean into the turn with your bike, your knee will rub against the surface. And what are you thinking as you do this? You're thinking shear is the force parallel to the surface divided by the area. And it's true, it's the first thing we study in fluid mechanics. Um, when we study shear, it's, we say it's a force parallel to some area divided by the area itself. Uh, so it's newtons per meter squared or pascals. But if you want to study shear in fluid mechanics, you need to go a little bit beyond this. Um, and we, you need to think about two things. Um, first is that shear has a direction. Um, and if shear has a direction, you need to specify it. Uh, when you say it's parallel to the surface, um, in which direction is it parallel? Because these are different possible shears, and so you need to specify this. And the second notion is that um, which plate are we talking about? Um, it turns out shear doesn't just apply on the size of the fluid, uh, on the, on the places where the fluid is in contact with solid walls. It also applies within the fluid itself. And so the fluid may shear against itself as it flows. Um, and we need to be able to quantify this if we want to quantify the dynamics of fluids. <laughs> so the big jump we need to make, really, is that there is no flat plate anymore. There is no solid surface on which we quantify shear. There is shear everywhere. And so there is no plate. Shear is the limit when the area of a certain surface decreases and tends towards zero of that force divided by the area. So we shrink down the plate to nothing, um, and we specify this with a vector. So this has now three dimensions, like so. Uh, shear is a field. So every time you are looking inside a fluid at the position x, y, z, uh, you need to specify shear at that place with three coordinates, the direction um, in which it's going and the magnitude with which it's going. Um, so shear at the given point has three components, tau x, tau y, tau z, and in the fluid there is a shear vector field. Um, so one vector with three components at every point in space and time. Okay, so far so good. So now how about we apply this now to not just points, but little volumes, uh, particles of fluid. As they flow around, they are being subjected to shear on their faces, and we want to quantify this. So what is the net effect due to shear? Well, we say, aha, because um, now that we have a cube instead of a plate, and this is my best approximation of a cube, uh, if you want to quantify the effect of shear on that cube, you need to take into account shear with three components on each of the six surfaces of the cube. Uh, and so you have now six different shears to apply, each with three components. So you have 18 different ways uh, of shearing a box, if you want. You need another dimension. And so we write it like this. You have tau, one, two, three, four, five, six, to go all around the, the cube. And each of those components has three components. And so you have, a if you want, a, sh a vector made out of vectors. And we call this a tensor, the shear tensor. Uh, so there are 18 ways to scratch a cat. If you say, I'm scratching the cat, you can scratch it from below, uh, from many sides, from the side, from many sides, and from the top, from the front, from the back, and so on and so forth. So you need to be specified when you scratch the cat, 18 different components, to be able to define this formula. There's a way to write shear, uh, a convention for writing it, um, and it is the notion that shear is written with two subscripts. We write tau, the symbol for shear, with the first subscript, which I call here A, and the second subscript, which I call here B. The first subscript stands for the direction perpendicular to the plane in which you're looking. So if your shear is pointing this way, you take the plane below that, and the direction perpendicular to that plane is going to be the first subscript. And then once you are on this plane, you orient it, uh, the second subscript, so that it points uh, towards the direction in which the shear is pointing, so that a is the direction perpendicular to the shear, and B is the direction in which the shear is pointing. Um, if you sum all those components up, you write it like this. For example, in the on the plane, 
that is perpendicular to the x direction, you would write the shear uh, tau xj, with j being x, y, and z. So you have three components of shear on a plane um, that's perpendicular to the x direction, and we write it like this, tau xj. So if you have a cube, now you take a cube, and on each of the planes of the cubic particle, you have a shear that has three components. Um, and what we want to do is not just write it all, uh, but we want to have the net effect of the shear on the particle. The formal way of writing, of expressing shear on a volume is with the tensor notation, which is a little bit abstract, because instead of having 18 components, we have three components like this, um, which group up uh, the components every time on the plane perpendicular to a certain direction. And so it's a way, if you want, to group up um, two faces at once on every line. Um, so you could write it like this with now nine components, nine pairs of components, if you want, um, of the shear on the six faces of the cubic particle. Um, so again, if you want to specify how you scratch the cat, you need to give 18 different pieces of information. Now, all of this information is too much for us in fluid mechanics. Um, shear has two effects on a fluid particle. One is interesting and one is not. The interesting, um, the uninteresting part, the part that's not interesting is the deformation. So you put the particle there and you shear it. Uh, you apply shear to it and it will strain, it will deform. So a poor particle has been like, oh, it's been completely suffering and being completely deformed by the shear. And the second effect, which is interesting to us, is that the particle is being accelerated. Meaning if you take the cube like this and the shear on top is higher than the shear on the bottom, uh, then there is a net shear in this direction that's applying to this particle. And this is what we want to quantify. We don't care about how it's deformed, how it is strained. We care about how it's accelerated around by this shear. So let's take a look. Um, let's take the component of shear um, that is in the x direction. What are all the components, what are the, all, all the contributors to the net effect of shear in the x direction? Well, uh, if I take the x direction, let's pretend it's in this way, like so, I have to take the pair of shears on top and bottom. So this shear minus that shear on the bottom here. This plus uh, the shears here and there, front and back, who also have some component in the x direction, plus the shears at the front and at the back here. And at this point, uh, you may be thinking, wait a second, you cannot have a shear perpendicular to the surface. What are all those shears that you have here that are written tau xx, tau zz, and tau yy over here? Well, the answer to this, I dedicate um, a small video to uh, that's separate to this. So right now, let's just focus on the mathematical component of this. Um, so shear in the x direction has three pairs of values that contribute to it. We're going to rewrite those pairs as so. We're going to say this is the um, areas six and three here are the same because the area here is the same as the area there. So I can just replace them like this. And then we say uh, this area is dx dy. I and mean, let's just subtract the two vectors of shear. So one shear like this and one shear like that. Let's subtract one from the other to get the net shear on each pair. And the, the way we do this yeah, is the same way that we've done this in with pressure in the previous chapter, is that we group up those two vectors and we say we're actually interested only in the delta between the two sides. So that we take, for for example, in this in this component of shear here on the face number three, I'm going to rewrite the shear on face number six as being just shear on face number three plus a d, a small differential of shear. And this is the guy who is really interesting to us. Um, so again, to come back to my equation here, this shear minus that shear there, I'm just going to call it d, uh, the d tau, the change in tau across uh, this direction. And this tau, again, like we did in pressure, I express it as a differential with respect to space. So the change of that element with respect to space 
multiplied by the distance that is separating them. So for example, if this was here, um, the z direction, vertical, and I'm looking at the x direction, um, I'm interested in the component of shear in the x direction. I want to take the change across z of the shear pointing in the x direction on those two faces. Yes. So I want the change of shear with respect to z multiplied by the distance that separates those, which is dz, like so. And I do this for the three dimensions, like so, here. And the trick uh, that we played here is that we group up dx, dy, dz, dx, dz, dy, and then dz, dy, dx here together so that we just express them as the volume, dv, uh, the volume of the particle. So we get this. Um, the details of the math of that expression are not important. What's very important is that you understand that the shear in the x direction is not just made of a pair of values like we have with pressure. With pressure in the x direction, we were looking only at that phase here and that phase there. With shear, it's a little different. We have a pair of shears on those two faces, a pair of shear on those two faces, and then a pair of shear on those two faces. And so all six faces contribute to the shear in the x direction. And the same will happen in the y and the z direction. Now, just before I close up, uh, I hear some of you already through the video saying this is a very tedious way of writing things. Um, isn't there a better way of expressing this component here, this, this sum of three vectors here? Um, and yes, there is, but this I keep for the next video.